Well, hi, welcome to Custom Works. I'm Clint Allen, and today we're going to cover 11 common 7.3 power stroke problems and the highest probability to get them handled. Stick around. Well, thanks for sticking around through that. Um, as I promised, we're going to hit down on 11 common problems and the highest probability of repair based on what I have run into. Uh, this isn't the all final all of what could actually be happening. It's just what I have ran into. And at the end, we're going to cover some information on something that you should invest into and one product never ever to use on your 7.3. So starting with the first one, uh, jerking and surging. Uh, with my experience, the number one issue is going to be your cam shaft position sensor. Number two, the wiring harness. As these vehicles are aged, it is very common to run into all kinds of little tiny issues with running of the 7.3 that simply comes back to the wiring harness just being used up from time. Uh, cracks, which is going to leak off voltage and the amount of ohms. Um, if you plan on keeping your 7.3 for a long period of time, this is an upgrade. This is a upgrade that you may want to consider. Yeah, a wiring harness for the top of the motor is pricey, but it'll make the thing run like a dream, and at least that'll be one problem out of the way if you have to go in and try to figure out if you're having a situation. Wiring harness just brand new and just completely eliminates that situation. And number three to follow up, uh, fuel pedal. I have seen people go to mechanic shop after mechanic shop after mechanic shop for me just to plug in my scanner and go, yep, fuel pedal is shot. So keep in mind of that one. Uh, engine misfires, the number one problem is generally the injector control pressure sensor or the wire leading up to it. Next one after that is going to be engine overheating. Number one problem, radiator is plugged up. And I don't mean internally, I just mean from going down the road and all the debris that gets sucked in goes to the radiator and gets stuck in between the air to air and the radiator and just clogs her up tight. Uh, this is something that after a few years of ownership, you should just pull it on out. You know, pulling a radiator is very easy out of a 7.3. Hit her with the old power washer. You know, don't get up close and personal with it, but you know, hit her up with the power washer, get it cleaned out. Don't remove the air to air, just get in there and get that cleaned out too. And it makes a huge difference. Uh, engine clutch fans being shot cavitation inside the water pump and water pump. So these are the main reasons uh, why most people have overheating issues. Now, when you get to the water pump situation, get new bolts. Uh, this is a requirement actually by Ford when you install a new water pump to put new bolts in. They're not that much expensive and it really saves on the driver's side of that water pump. Those longer bolts have a certain stretch that they require to have and the old bolts from the heat and from the time of being torqued have just lost their stretch. I've seen a lot of people put in a new water pump. Ah, you know, I'm not going to buy the new bolts. You know, gee, 16 bucks is just, you know, going to keep me from having my favorite sudsy treat. And 
you know, there they are a couple weeks later with a leak. This all can be handled by just putting new bolts in and torquing them down properly. Uh, jet engine noise from the exhaust. Um, I haven't run into this a whole lot, but there is a few threads on the old internet of people trying to figure this one out and all it is is a bad exhaust back pressure valve. Uh, either the turbo pedestal is not opening it up properly or it's just jammed up from the turbo usually starting to go out and oil gets uh, stuck and there you go it gets jammed up. Uh, inline a fuel pump frequent failure. This one's an easy one. Uh, there's a lot of mechanics that miss it though. They'll just throw in a new fuel pump and then bam, a couple months down the road again, you're sitting on the side of the road. Clogged fuel pickup. That's usually where the problem is. Yeah, it sucks, but you're gonna have to drop the tank, pull out the pickup unit out of there, and there's two little filters that need to be removed and cleaned out. Um, I personally myself I'm going to suggest that you put on a sump onto the tank and just bypass all that crap and I also have a bulldog system on my trucks uh, dual filtering I use a 10 micron it just to me it's the way to go you do what you want uh, turbo spool ups it stops spooling up uh, biggest thing that I see is wastegate malfunctions which is usually associated with the turbocharger going out uh, turbo burnt up uh, and, and this this is an easy one you know the the 7.3 if you start losing oil you know you go out there and you check the oil and a lot of people don't do this you really just start needing to do this I check mine daily, but I also run mine very hard every day. But at least weekly go out there and keep an eye on that oil. You start having a lot of oil consumption, you got a turbo burning out or you got orange burning out. And it's a lot easier to catch in that advance than having to clean your tank out and have to go through and you know basically clean your whole system up because you got oil now in your gas tank and or your whole exhaust system is full of oil. So that's how you handle that. Uh, stalling engine, always the injector control pressure sensor. Very rarely is it anything else. Number two, the cam sensor. Um, those are the situations there. Uh, damaged oil coolers because most people don't think about this. Uh, the oil cooler has a very big set of oarings and every three years the reason why I don't have a problem is because I pull it out, put new oarings on it and reinstall it. And this is a very simple process to do. Now I don't remove the whole unit and take it out. What I do is I just disconnect the back closest to the firewall, pull it on out and replace the o-rings, clean it on up, and put it back in. Uh, over time, the system from the coolant does get clogged up a little bit and is not cooling the oil as it should. It, it's no big deal. It, it only takes a few hours. The o-rings are cheap. Uh, you know, I, I would highly suggest doing that. You know, it doesn't have to be done yearly, but like I said, I do it every three years. Uh, next thing that I see is AC blowing hot air, rubber connectors to the metal lines over time. It just, they, from the heat of the engine, they just go bad and it leaks out. Uh, up pipe leaks. Number one problem I always see is broken bolts at the manifold. Heat, weather, rust, pop, break. There you go. Uh, simple fix, just buy new bolts. Uh, go underneath your truck on a regular basis. When you change the oil, take a look up there. How do those bolts look? They look like somebody took a torch to them and they're starting to drip. And they look like they're starting to drip. Just replace them. Really easy fix at that point in time. And next one is going to be alternator burnout. 
Uh, and I'm not talking about, you know, five years or eight years you had an alternator burnout. I'm talking about a situation where every year to two years you have an alternator going out. Uh, on the 7.3, this would not be a common situation. What you have going on there is either bad battery connections, pull those connectors off, get them cleaned up, get the battery posts cleaned up, do this on a regular basis. Can't explain to you why or the what's, but I always notice that those connectors for some odd strange reason get loose over time. Uh, bad starter connection and that is a situation where there's just so much power going from them batteries and especially in the cold weather down to that starter and they got that big thick wire on there and it just goes down to that little metal post that connects to the starter it just burns it out over time so I would suggest uh, going through and either putting in a new wire and or putting a new end on it and that'll help you save that alternator uh, bad or mismatched batteries. Now, in the very near future, I'm going to be doing a complete video on electrical and what I think 7.3 owners should be doing for their electrical systems in their trucks. And uh, you'll be pretty impressed with what I've come up with in there. but. Having mismatched batteries, and I know somebody's going to hit the comments and go, oh, geez, I've been running, you know, different batteries all along, and I never have any problems and stuff like that. Well, I'll show you on a voltage gauge why you shouldn't be running mismatched batteries, and in the upcoming video, I'm also going to show you what batteries you should be using. I know. It's like, ooh, well, geez, there's a different battery I should be using. I'll show it to you. And I've been using the same ones in my trucks for over 11 years. That's two battery purchases, one for each side, and I'm at 11 years on the same batteries. So make sure you tune in for that. So I promised you at the beginning a couple things. And what we're going to do first off is cover magic in the bottle and AT205 and I'm gonna get in by you a little bit closer hopefully this will focus up no it's getting darker uh, should we pull it out there all right there we go this product right here is a absolutely fantastic product but do not ever put this in a 7.3 or a 6.0 or anything that has Huey injectors. Um, I have used this and most people use this when they have a transmission leak or a rear main leak. And I have used this successfully but I don't use the whole bottle. I only use like a third of it but that's in gas motors and all that is is just to buy me a little bit of time but if you pour that in your 7.3 you will be rebuilding your motor every seal is going to get screwed up right on down to your injectors at first it might seem like ooh, well this is working it stopped my rear main seal leak or it stopped my front seal leak Oh, <laughs> you give it a couple more months when you're sitting on the side of the road and you're sitting there going, well, why won't it run? <laughs> Don't ever pour that in your 7.3 or 6.0. Bad idea. It's, uh, it, it will ruin every piece of seal, oaring, everything in there, and you will cease to be running. Uh, next thing on the list is uh, these right here. Um, these are great little units that read the PO codes and, and they're cute, you know. Um, I would not suggest these. Just forget about these right here. I, uh, I have one that is dedicated. This right here is actually a dedicated unit which hooks up 
and is programmed specifically only to assess 7.3s and this also hooks up to my laptop also uh, via through a junction cord. What I am going to suggest is and this is not expensive and you can actually upload PIDs to this but they do have these OBD readers if you're not in the know and there's several online apps that you can download to your phone and I personally don't like using the phone I usually like using the pad um, and it's just a vision thing but either which way Everything you need to monitor on a 7.3, any type of problem that you need to figure out on a 7.3, you can do through these new OBD systems. Um, I'm not going to give you any suggestions of what companies that you should go through because once again I have my own system. But anything that you want to monitor, you can upload the PIDs and monitor and figure out any problem with your truck. Uh, Pre-fuel system, you know, that, that's something that's just easy to figure out. Either your pump is, you know, not working or you have something that's plugged up. But beyond that, you can monitor everything from your high pressure oil pump to your ICPs, to your cam sensors, any type of sensor that's in there even do buzz tests with it. Uh, these little OBDs are absolutely fantastic and I really highly suggest that if you have a 7.3 and you're committed to keeping that truck, go out, investigate these, um, spend the money, go get them, upload the PIDs, and you will really be able to quickly assess any problems that you might have had or have. But I hope you have learned something today and you take it easy and you have a good day. You're still here yet? It's over. Oh, I know. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell, and that'll tell you when my next video comes up. Until then, go home.